As we lit the candle of joy today, um, it's good to reflect on, on the opportunities that we have to experience joy um, and share joy with other people. Um, one of the things that, that I think um, a lot of us sometimes struggle with is making sure that, that what we're experiencing on the inside is shining through on the outside. I mean, some of us have to remind us to tell our faces that we're experiencing the joy of life, and, and it's really good to do that. One of the great things about uh, being with our, our Cuban brothers and sisters in Christ in the midst of, of their, their just incredible poverty is, is they also don't have any trouble um, experiencing and sharing great joy. Um, it, they just, it just kind of exudes out in everything that they do, and, and especially in, in their worship. And I just, I, I just uh, Denise, honey, I want to assure you there's not too much footage of me dancing um, in Cuba, but, but there is some. Uh, so, uh, you know, I know that some of you are kind of going, wow, I've never seen you dance in worship. No, you haven't, but, but uh, um, uh, well, it was a thing to behold. Um, anyway, um, you know, one of the things that we do at Christmas time is we begin to think about um, the gifts that we're going to give to people and the gifts that, that we're going to receive. Um, and, and each gift um, always comes with some kind of a message, whether it's a, an unintended message or an intended message. For instance, if, uh, if you were to give someone the gift of mouthwash, you're abundantly clear the message that you're sending to them, right? Okay? Or if you place um, a piece of coal in the stocking of uh, your grandchild, you know the message you're sending. You've been naughty, not nice, and so this is what you're getting, right? Um, someone told me about one time when they, they received a, a sweater as a gift. It was a very nice sweater, but there was a problem with the gift. Um, that person did not like sweaters, and she never wore sweaters. So the gift communicated to the person receiving the gift that the other person didn't know them very well. Um, another person spoke about receiving the same gift from the same person three years in a row. Um, can you imagine that? Um, and that means that there wasn't very much thought given to the gift or that the person really didn't care that much about what the gift was. Someone else um, told me about a very thoughtful gift made with, with love, to be sure, of hand-sewn pants. And the problem was is that everyone knew that as soon as that gift was opened, that that man was never wearing those pants. Um, it, just, it just wasn't the right gift at the right time for the right person. Um, well, here's the thing. In sending his son, the father sought to communicate that Jesus is his perfect gift to us and for us. That is, Jesus Christ is always the gift that we most need. Uh, he's the right fit at just the right time. And in sending us Jesus, we get to see the depth of the Father's love for us through the gift of the Son. Colossians 1 uh, verse 15 says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. That is, He is the, the imprint, the very imprint of, of God the Father Himself. Now, we're going to look at the Gospel of John's Christmas story today. And in the Gospel of John, the story of Jesus doesn't start with, with the birth and the nativity scene of a, a fearfully frightened uh, and faithful teenage girl, nor do we uh, get to see her confused fiancé uh, riding with her on a donkey for several days to discover that there's no room in the inn. Um, in the Gospel of John... There are no shepherds, there are no angels. In the Gospel of John, there, there are no, no wise men bending the knee and bringing gifts uh, to Jesus Christ. Um, instead, um, there's something different. Uh, the Gospel of John begins with the powerful echoes of creation itself from Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning... That means not with the birth, but in the very beginning of all time and all space, of the creation of the world. But the one thing that all four Gospels share uh, is, the, is the reality that, that Jesus Christ, that the Father came to reveal Himself to us in and through His very own Son, His perfect Son. And one of the big mistakes that we human beings tend to make is that we, we think that it's our job to run around and find God. 
But the reality is, is, is God has already sent Jesus Christ to this planet to seek and to save us. We simply need to allow ourselves to be found. God's not running around and hiding. We're the ones who hide from God. And in and through Jesus Christ, the Father came to reveal himself in fullness and in love, to express the full reality of love that he has for us. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for your amazing love and grace. We thank you that Jesus Christ truly is the perfect gift. As we reflect on the gifts that we will receive and the gifts that we will give to others, help us always remember that the Father provided the very best, the very perfect gift, the one that we needed the most of all, Jesus Christ, to be truly saved and transformed in this life. Emmanuel, God, here with us now. And God, now I pray that you'll, you'll help me get out of the way so you can come and truly be the way, the truth, and the life in the lives of those who are gathered here on this day and help each person um, uh, hear exactly what it is that you need them to hear this day in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and 10 through 14 says this. In the beginning, the word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. He came into the very world He created. But the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but birth that comes from God. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son, the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In the Old Testament, when the people um, encountered God in a very real way, they would set up stones. The stones were called an Ebenezer. Um, here's a song we sing, that here I raise mine Ebenezer. That's what it's talking about. It's, a, it's just a way of marking a moment and saying, God was here. This was a special place we encountered God in this moment, uh, building, building the tabernacle, the tent where the people would worship God um, as they wandered through the wilderness um, and made their sacrifices, was a, a memory marker, a way of saying God was here, building the temple, um, Solomon as he built the temple, it was a way of saying God was here. Um, and that was an important reality as they, as they built things to communicate that God was in a particular place. But something different happens when Jesus Christ enters into the world. I mean, he's the ultimate Ebenezer. He's the ultimate memory marker. But he's not a, only a memory marker because the verb tense changes from was to is. Now it's not that God was here. Now we declare that God is here in fullness in Jesus Christ. When the, when the Word became flesh, uh, reality shifted. God is here with us, among us, for us. And often when we refer to God's location, what do we do? We look upward, right? We say, look, God is up there. And there's a truth in that. Like, and, and oftentimes, one of the things, uh, since the pastors down in Cuba don't speak uh, English and I don't speak Spanish, one of the things is we communicate um, when we wanted to say, uh, you know, it was something for God's glory or God gets the credit, we would go like this, you know, point upward. Um, but the reality is, it's not just that God is up there somewhere away from us. Part of what we declare in Jesus Christ coming here to, to be fully incarnated, to be really fully 100% God, is that his location is now with us, among us, here. Um, and, and it's a reality for us. Uh, but in the incarnation, part of what we're declaring is that Jesus, as fully human and fully God, not half God and half human, Je Jesus wasn't some superhero, 
Okay, we say in the incarnation that the Word of God in fullness dwelt within this human being. Um, he represented God to us. He was holy and righteous and perfect, and yet He, he knows all about us. He gets us. Uh, Jesus knows our pain. He knows our weakness. He knows what it's like to live life in our skin. He knows what it's like to experience um, temptation. He knows what it's like um, to, to experience all the ways that we go through life. And, um, and the reality for us is that, that as Jesus came to be God with us, um, there's a truth beyond God is up there that's really important for us. John 1 declares, is saying, God is here now with us. Um, when someone asked me recently what the best gift I ever received was, I had to think about that for a moment. And, and finally, I came up with an, an unconventional answer because I said it was a gift that I received from my grandma Westlake. Um, every year as a child, I would give her um, a box of chocolate-covered cherries and, and I knew that she must love the chocolate-covered cherries because by the end of the day visiting, they were all gone. You know, that box of 12 chocolate-covered cherries that you have to taste a little waxy, um, they were all gone every time. And so every year, I would make sure I got my grandma a box of, of chocolate-covered cherries. And, and when I turned um, 21 uh, years old, so I became an adult, um, um, you know, she, she said, you know, Jamie, um, I love you, but I can't stand chocolate-covered cherries. And my grandmother gave me the gift of the truth. I mean, and what an incredible gift that can be sometimes. Why? Because if I ever wanted to give her a gift that she actually wanted, I had to move away from the chocolate-covered cherries. That wasn't going to happen. Um, in other words, when I got them, everybody else ate them by the end of the day. It, it, she never, but I realized in that moment, I'd never seen her actually eat one. Um, she spoke a word that I needed to hear um, if I wanted to help her feel appreciated in my gift giving. Well, God came to speak a word of truth and grace in love to us about Jesus. And, and Jesus um, represents and he translates uh, the love of the Father by entering into our world, by, by speaking our language. Jesus is the very gift we need in, in whatever circumstances that we're facing. In, in much, in little, um, and we have everything that we need and want, um, he's still the greatest gift that we can receive. He's still what we need the most. In our most dire circumstances, in our greatest fears, in our biggest worries, Jesus Christ is still the gift that we most need to receive into our life. And so we declare something incredibly radical that Jesus, God himself, entered into to human history, into space and time. And, um, and we say the, the eternal cosmic sun made a choice to enter the world at just the right time uh, for just the right reasons so that we could see and hear and know the reality uh, of God through Him. Think about this. The, the sun freely chose to leave heaven to uh, take on a limited, the limitations of humanity from the unlimited reality of eternity, from being everywhere at all times uh, to being in a particular place at a particular time. Why? Why in the world would the Son of God freely choose such a thing? Simply to communicate the love and the truth of the Father. Have you ever heard the phrase, um, there's nothing like being there? I mean, you know, that's pretty common, isn't it? Um, well, six of us uh, from New Hope United Methodist Church were in Cuba this week visiting um, our sister church in Nuevo Yao and Buea Riba. And, and they, are, they are considered, even in Cuba, to be out in the sticks. Um, they, are, they are distant places. Um, but, but it's impossible to interpret and translate um, what we fully experienced. Why? Because you weren't there. You weren't with us. But we still have to try. We have to try to communicate um, what it was like and what we experienced. 
Because there is nothing like truly being there, Um, which is precisely what the Father knew in sending Jesus. Jesus came because the Father realized there's nothing like being there. Nothing takes the place of that. And so for all those years, all those years of of biblical prophecy that led up to Jesus as the people cried out for a Savior, a Messiah, they waited all those years, and finally God sends Jesus into that moment. And the incarnation became a reality, God here with us. And and we had the privilege of seeing that lived out in such uh, deep and beautiful ways this week in Cuba. Um, And it made me reflect on the cry of the prophet Isaiah from 700 plus years ago as the prophet cried out in Isaiah 64.1. Oh, that you, God, would burst from the heavens and come down. And that is precisely what God the Father does in sending us Jesus. And, And he says, Jesus says, I am here. Not I was here. I am here in the present tense reality for everything that we face. How many of you know the reasons why we actually put um, lights on Christmas trees? Um, The reason why people started doing that was because it represented the light of Christ in a dark world. Um, It was communicating the presence of Jesus Christ Um, no matter what was going on um, in one's life or in the world. And yes, there can be a lot of darkness in the world all the time, right? But still, Christ's light shines always because he is here. Wednesday evening, um, we got to worship with with our brothers and sisters in Christ in Buea Reba. Um, And where they worship, um, it's an an outdoor pavilion. Um, And let me just say... um, Thank the Lord for comfortable pews um, because um, their pews are just benches and, and they don't have any padding and um, their services aren't one hour. Um, and so I, I got to say, I'm really grateful not to sit on a wooden bench for a while. But, but so as we gathered for worship um, underneath the pavilion that's right off the parsonage, um, their, their sanctuary uh, that they've been renovating for four and a half years is is off to the side, um, and and you can you can kind of see it in the distance because um, it's two stories high, um, but but um, at one point in the service, um, Pastor Alex invited the congregation to to look over to their left, and as they they looked over to their left, um, they saw something they'd never seen before, um, and they looked and what was there was the, there were lights that were on in their new sanctuary that they're working on. And, um, and so here's a picture of that moment. There's a, it's almost as if Jay Polizzi, our electrician, is looking up and saying, let there be light. Um, and, and he's lifting that up. And, and it was an incredibly great moment of celebration and joy that we got to experience. It was an exciting moment for them and for us um, as we have the privilege of partnering with them in ministry and mission. Christine Kane says, Jesus didn't come to make us safe. Jesus came to make us us dangerous to a kingdom of darkness. Um, And those literal lights um, that we install with our brothers and sisters in Christ in Cuba will battle spiritual darkness in their community and bring new hope to so many people. And you made that happen. Well, you helped make that happen through your gifts, through your grace, through, through sending us. Um, and, and I want to be clear about being grateful for you. Without the, without the window frames that, that many of you um, donated uh, to them, that you provided, um, we couldn't have put those wires in because the wires would be stripped and stolen. Um, now they're protected. They're there. Um, they're valuable, and they're in the building, though. They're, they're not going to go away. So thank you for being Jesus present with them here and now. It's important. It made me remember what we just got done talking about in John chapter 1, verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Jesus' light will shine in the world. When you go looking at Christmas tree lights, you remember 
that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And, and it's your job. When, when you look at, hey, look at those lights. Um, whenever you say that, just remember that, that, that now it's our job to be on the lookout for the light and to point to it. And it's our job to say, oh, yeah, Jesus, he's the light. And, and I get to join him in, in working where he is. Jesus is here with us now. And that is a moment to celebrate. And in the midst of such uh, devastating poverty and soul-crushing political oppression, I am always struck by the profound joy and gratitude of our Cuban Methodist brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, when we worship with them, um, such joy. When we spend time with them, um, they find a way to communicate um, how God is present with them in Jesus Christ. They have no doubts that God entered into human history to make a difference in their lives. And it's inspiring. Um, they're filled with gratitude and joy that, that G they know Jesus is here with them and for them. And think about this. When, when they pray the Lord's Prayer um, and they ask God for their daily bread, they mean it. They, they're crying out to God um, for their daily bread. When was the last time you genuinely worried about your next meal? When was the last time you, you, you said, you know, I, I just, I don't know where my next meal is coming from. I don't think I've ever had such a worry in my life. One of the church leaders there who, um, she has a, a weekly worship experience um, in her home where she can invite her her family, friends, and neighbors uh, as an easy, easy entree into the life of the church. Um, um, she, uh, she shared beautifully with one of our team members, uh, Felicidad Batanzas, um, uh, some of her life and, and, and what it was like to be in her skin. And um, um, she said uh, the reality for her um, was that, that she feels like a millionaire. Because one of the things that, that she knows is even though she doesn't have very much stuff, God has been so good to her that, that God has given her everything that she's ever needed and more. And, and she's never had one day in her life where God didn't answer her prayer for daily bread. God's always come through. And besides that, she said, um, she said, I never have to worry about my home being broken into because I don't have anything anybody would be interested in stealing. I mean, quite a perspective to be able to have. I mean, her filled with joy, faith in Jesus Christ in the midst of such circumstances is so incredibly inspiring. And their joy in Christ is truly infectious. Um, you know, may, may our gratitude look like that, simply because Jesus is here with us now. Um, in the midst of, I, I mean, most of us truly have so much, even if we're, we're poor on American standards, we have so much. May our gratitude truly become infectious as we experience God's joy as well, no matter what we have or how little, how much. I had the privilege of assisting um, the pastor in Buea Reba in baptizing five, five members. Um, we were one church in two languages in one really cold river. Um, and, um, and it was beautiful as, as each new believer um, went down under the water in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit of the, the Padre, the, the Ego, the E Spiritu Santo to celebrate new creation in Christ. And it was and it was awesome. Um, they, had, they had so much joy on their face as they came up and, and knew that this was a moment that was a, a marker moment where they put in their Ebenezer in the ground and said, this is a special place. Not God was here. God is here. And God is going to be with me um, through the rest of my life as well. Um, Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Um, says this in the message version of the Bible. Think of yourself as the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. He had equal status with God, 
but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privilege of deity and took on the status of a slave, becoming human. Uh, Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredibly humble proclamation. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived selflessly. He lived a selfless, obedient life and then died a selfless, obedient death, the worst kind of death at that, crucifixion. And in the midst of of recognizing the birth of Christ, we always also remember the fullness of his life and the reality that he was going to die on a cross for us and experience resurrection that we might have that new life in Christ. And in the midst of, of all of our mess, all of our darkness, or all the darkness that we see in this world, Jesus, the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us, lifts up our heads, looks us in the eye, and says, I have come for you. You are mine. And he says, I I am here with you. Not, I was here with you years ago when you first said yes to me. I am here with you now in whatever it is that you're facing. And and I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to invite you to have more of me in your life. Why? Because you are precious to me, God says. Do you hear that loudly and clearly? I hope you do. Why? Because it's abundantly clear that if the Father would send the Son into this mess, that he absolutely loves you, that you are absolutely precious to the Father. And Jesus promises to take us by the hand and say, "Um, let me walk with you through whatever it is that you're experiencing. Let me walk with you um, through uh, your past hurts. Let me walk with you in your present, uh, whatever your pains and concerns are today. Let me lead you into my preferred future for your life because I love you. The truth about me is that I am precious to God. And the truth about you is that you are precious to God. Jesus is here. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for uh, your amazing grace and love. We thank you for Jesus Christ who truly does um, know what it's like to be in our skin. He knows our temptations. He knows our fears. He knows our worries. Um, he, he knows those moments when we want to run away from him. Um, and he is with us. And we are precious to you. Help us know that as we go through Um, our everyday walking around lives for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen.